How do you define engineering leadership? You have to have a good understanding of the subject, number one. It starts with someone like myself coming up with a pipe dream. You have to be able to articulate the vision to the team so that they all buy in, they can understand where their piece fits in. Courage to take the risks, to really uh, look at designing, developing, and enhancing products that drive the strategic future of an organization. And then when I convince a management team that I respect that this is accomplishable, only then does it become a true company vision. And it's the role of the engineering leadership in the context of the engineering challenges and problems that you're trying to solve to define that vision, that strategy. Building the team, building the right environment to execute on those opportunities, and then driving it. To customer realization of a real solution. How are engineering leaders different from other leaders? The, but there's no difference, I think, between engineering and other leadership. You have to know your subject, good attitude, and get, have the respect of your people. I believe if Gandhi or Golda Meir had been engineers, they probably would have been great engineering leaders. Um, again, I think that the requirement is that you're able to not just analyze, but synthesize. So the engineering synthesis requires the understanding of the problems, the engineering skills, the disciplines, the technologies in such a way that you can put it all together and come up with a solution and ideas that really make sense. Well, it's interesting. Engineering is all about creating a product and often in an environment of very constrained resources. And in my view, a true engineering leader is able to help their team balance the product requirements, the schedule, and the money available to achieve real success with the product. Are engineering leaders born or made? But you make, you make, you have to make leadership. That's from my standpoint. I don't know who I, what somebody else is thinking. Engineering leaders are born and made both. You have to have both pieces. In my experience, engineering leaders, from the time they're born, as a child, they become very project-oriented, very hand-eye coordinated. And then as they go through life, they usually bump into one or two key individuals who may be instructors, who may be co-workers, who both train and inspire them to be something more. Some people have a predisposition to be able to be a leader in an engineering team, but obviously there's a lot of experience that goes along with it. I think there are some people who clearly don't want to do that, that they really want to just be given a goal and sort of, you know, optimize to that metric. And so I definitely feel like there are two kinds of people that go into engineering. The kind that make the engineering leaders are the people who really can look at a bigger picture and they're willing to think what's the actual implication of the metric that they're supposed to meet as opposed to just take that and optimize to that. What single trait most helped you become an engineering leader? The ability to listen. The drive for success. Intellectual curiosity. You wear a lot of hats. Creativity. Being a generalist. It involves listening to others, understanding what their issues are, um, putting your own needs aside for those of others, and um, taking those in the organization that have issues and, and bringing those issues forward so that you have a, a very concise team to work with. What will future engineering leaders look like? Future engineering leaders are going to have to find all new ways of incorporating the most recent advance, advances in, in information technology to run their businesses smarter and faster to meet an ever increasingly rapid world of change. I'd say, you know, with if you look at global competition, um, the acceleration of, of everything in, in our society, increasing standards, it's just going to be a harder job. Um, and so the future leaders, they're going to have to be smarter, they're going to have to be more flexible, and they're going to have to come into the job better prepared for leadership. Um, male, female, um, all races, all different ethnicities. Um, I think it's important that we have a lot of diversity in the engineering workforce. I think tomorrow's engineering leader is a, the savviest business executive in the company. 
as engineering projects become more and more complicated and more and more global, more and more interdisciplinary, I think you'll see future engineering leaders have to manage all of those aspects, that they will need to deal with teams that are dispersed globally, customers who are generating requirements that are dispersed globally, and also deal with people who are from many fields outside of engineering.